Jeffrey and I, we were working with uh, a vocal track for temp music, so we knew we wanted to have the score be human voices. And then we were at Zuni one day, right? And we saw Bobby. And we thought, Bobby, Eureka, um, and wrote him a letter, and he said yes. And that's how he had never done a score before. He put together a voice extra for the film, and then they went on tour after the film. Um, in terms of Dustin Hoffman, I think we all discussed getting, we wanted someone unassailably straight to narrate it, to make the country feel um, comfortable at that time. And we went to Jimmy Stewart, and he passed. Um, and then I was working at Sand Dollar, uh, which was a production company that was owned by Sandy Gallon and Dolly Parton. And the sister company was a management company who managed Barbara Streisand, Dolly Parton, Neil Diamond, Michael Jackson, the Pointer Sisters, all those people in all their areas of uh, entertainment threw off per year $300 million. In California, uh, manag real money. managers can't make deals, only agents can make deals by law. So we pushed all our clients to CAA at the height of Mike Ovitz's CAA-ness. And he had an assistant named, in, uh, in other words, we were writing a check every year to Mike Ovitz for $30 million. So Mike had to be very good to me, but he had like 100 other schmucks that he had to cater to as well. And I learned how to use those levers of power. And one of the levers of power was his assistant, Jay Maloney. And I don't know if you remember this, but you sent me a rough cut that was three and a half hours. And I remember I watched it with Joel Schumacher one night, and he looked at me and said, Howard, Oscar time. And I remember thinking to myself, wow. And I remember calling up Jay Maloney and I said to him, I, want, I need you to watch this movie because Mike represents Dustin Hoffman and I want you to get this rough cut to Dustin Hoffman. And so he did. And then the next day, I called up Mike Ovitz <laughs> and I said, I need you to watch this three and a half hour rough cut, which he did. And the next morning he called me up and he said, this deserves an Oscar. Dustin Hoffman has never done pro bono. He's in London now doing Death of a Salesman. I will get this to him. And the guys went to him and got him. Bill and I went to London and recorded him. And the only thing he asked for was bananas. Remember <laughs> bananas in the recording studio <laughs> for energy. Right, right. And he was doing a play. So I, you never know with somebody that's that prominent and that also that busy when they're doing something, you know, pro bono, are they just going to show up and like you know do it in 20 minutes? Or are they going to actually, you know, work? And obviously, Dustin actually worked, and he did every change, did every fix. Let's try this. Let's try that. He could not have been sweeter or more supportive. And somebody, I forget who it was, somebody in the room, and Dustin, I think, has eight eight children, <laughs> something like that. Um, and someone said, well. If one of your kids was gay, you know, would you be okay with it? Which again, it shows you how long ago it was, because now nobody would think of asking, would that be okay? And I mean, but somebody asked him, and he said, well, of course I'd be okay, so long as you know they had someone they loved and it was cool. So, well, so what could piss you off that your kid could do? And he thought about it for a second. And he says, they could be a critic. <laughs> <laughs> He allied himself with the quilt um, and this project. I mean, everywhere we went, he was, you know, and is very, very proud of his work and still talks about it to this day.